Hey, third grade. This week, we're going to be reading The Great K-Pop Tree. So that's what I've got behind me here, if you can kind of see. It's got a big canopy, um, lots of trees and or lots of leaves and branches. And um, I have a feeling lots of animals live there. And the story actually takes place in the rainforest. So kind of be thinking about what you know about the rainforest, um, where they are, what they do, the animals that live there. Uh, think about all of that as we are reading. And this book is actually going to introduce you to some of those animals and give you a little bit of background about the Kapok tree. Now, this story is a fictional story, but I think it's actually trying to teach you something. So pay close attention to what you are learning as you are reading and think about where those rainforests are. All right. Two men walked into the rainforest. Moments before, the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now, all was quiet. As the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great K-pop tree. Then he left. Let's take a look if we can at the man there. What do you notice that's on his side? What do you think that means for the tree or what he's trying to do? The smaller man took the ax he carried and struck the trunk of the tree. Whack, whack, whack. The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. Chop, chop, chop. The man wiped off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack, chop, whack, chop. Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great cape oak tree. Before he knew it, the heat and the hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. A boa constrictor lived in the K-pop tree. He slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the ax had made in the tree. Then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear, Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senor, my hive is in the Cape Hope tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. It's interesting to think about. I think we all kind of realize that, but when you think about the animals that we learn about here, think about how they all need each other to survive. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the cape oak tree. They chattered to the sleeping man. Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away and the forest will become a desert. A toucan macaw and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked the toucan, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush and soon the forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, only black and smoldering ruins remain. A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf in a squeaky voice. He piped in the man's ear, Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of us homeless if you chop down this great cape oak tree. Ooh. A jaguar had been sleeping along a branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended into the dappled light and shadows of the understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, 
Senor, the kapok tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? That's again kind of showing how all of them are connected. One life is dependent on the next. Four tree porcupines swung down from branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. And Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you will destroy that which gives us all life. Several anteaters climbed down the kapok tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstrapped anteater said to the sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future. And surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends upon what you do today. The big man tells you to chop, chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. I wonder who the big man is. It could be um, maybe his boss, maybe the world in general explaining or, you know, asking him to do things or, I don't know, but that's kind of a, one of those questions that I wonder if it'll be answered after we finish the story. A three-toed sloth had begun climbing down the canopy when the man first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground. Plodding over ever so slowly to the sleeping man, she spoke in her deep and lazy voice. Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? I notice um, in the book as well, the colors that the illustrator uses kind of show how beautiful it is, how bright and happy it is. A child from the Yanomamo tribe who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child and all around him staring were the creatures who depended upon the great cape oak tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great cape oak tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the ocean floor, but he heard no sound, for the creatures were strangely silent. The man stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arms as though to strike the tree. Suddenly, he stopped. He turned and looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated. Then he dropped the axe and walked out of the rainforest. So it looks like all that talking did some good. They maybe made him realize that it would be a mistake to cut down that tree. Um, this is from Lynn Cherry, it's a note. And it says, dear readers, I wrote the great cape oak tree to let the world know what happens to the rainforest creatures and to the entire planet when rainforests are destroyed. I hope that after reading this book, you will help save the rainforest. The great cape oak tree is about the Amazon rainforest, a tropical rainforest. But we have a temperate rainforest in the Pacific Northwest of the United States that we must protect too. Please care for Mother Earth. Together, we can make a difference. Lynn Cherry. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the great K Polk tree. Maybe it'll give you some uh, ideas, some things that you wanna research about the rainforest.
And I can't wait to get all of your responses from your daily deep dives and your think about reading. Bye guys.